Welcome to another tech video from Frimley Computing. So today we're going to be upgrading the firmware on this Draytech switch. So let's get it powered on. As you can hear, it is a completely silent fanless model. This is the non-PoE variation. It's a gigabit, 24 port gigabit switch. You've got four um, copper or four SFP one gig connections so this is a way that you can join um, your switches together so linking multiple switches or providing an uplink to your router um, in terms of uh, connectivity as you can see here pure gigabit auto sensing between 10 100 and gigabit ports that is all there is to it in terms of the switch itself um, it's the usual standard stuff it's uh, supports VLANs, uh, DOS, uh, all sorts of uh, wonderful stuff, including auto detecting NVRs and your video cameras. So, CCTV cameras you can connect into this. Obviously, there need to be powered cameras because this is not a PoE switch, um, but all of the options are available for you. Completely silent, so you can sit it on your desk in the office if you really want to, um, but this is more geared around the data center or sitting in a comms room um, along with your PoE switches. So what we're going to be talking about today is a straight firmware upgrade of the device and then a quick walkthrough on some of the, op the options that you need to make sure are in place before you deploy, deploy into a live environment. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is once we've got our switch powered up, um, we're going to be using an application called Angry IP Scanner and we're going to be sweeping the network to find the IP address of the device itself. So we're going to be looking for um, the last sort of between 100 and 180 is the last octet on the uh, IP. We know pretty much all the devices on our network. So we should be able to find it easily. Okay, so we've got the first one here that looks like it. So let's go ahead and open a browser and see if we can connect to it. And here we are. So uh, the default username and password is admin admin. You will be prompted to change the default admin password on login and um, it's important that you do that. We've already done this previously so we've already changed it and we're going to log straight in. <clears throat> okay so to upgrade the firmware the first thing you want to do is you want to go to system maintenance scroll down and go into upgrade manager you want to download the firmware so you want to go to the uh, the, the Draytech website go to support download and resources Scroll down and then we want to go down and search for G1280, which is our switch. And the version that we're interested in, you see the latest version is 267. So we're going to select our switch. And we're going to download the firmware. And then we're going to open the firmware file and we're going to extract that to a sensible and meaningful location on our system. So that is downloaded. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to use our upgrade method as HTTP because this will allow you to upload the firmware direct through the web browser. You can do it via TFTP if you've got a TFTP server. You obviously need to configure all the details, but with HTTP, you're in the browser already, so that's the easiest option. So we want to navigate to where we unloaded it. And we're going to select the, here we are, the G1280. The .all file will preserve your configuration, so don't worry about that. The only file that will 
um, reset it to factory default is a .rst file, a reset file. But what this will do is this will keep your current configuration and just upload the firmware, upgrade the firmware. So then we apply that and we're going to upgrade the firmware. This will take a little while, so we'll come back when this is completed. So once the firmware is upgraded, uh, you'll be prompted to reboot. You can either click cancel, but I suggest that you click on the OK to reboot the system. That will then go off and restart itself, and when it comes back up, it will be on the new version of code that you have provided. So once the system reboots, you can log back in. And then we'll be on the latest version that we've just upgraded. OK, so before you deploy your system into production, um, we're not going to be going through the um, the LAN settings and VLAN management. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to talk briefly about the maintenance options that you want. So the first thing you want to do is you want to navigate to system maintenance time and date. You want to make sure that your device is um, set so that it picks up the correct time so in Europe we have daylight savings so we want to select that as European and then we want to apply that it's important that your system has the correct date and time on it not so much for the logging but uh, for connectivity of devices um, and certificates as well so uh, always make sure that you come in and set your time zone and time accordingly so as you can see here, we want to accept the defaults under the time. So the SNTP server or the NTP server, you want to make sure that it's enabled. And then also make sure that your system time zone is correct. The next thing you want to do um, is integrate it with SNMP if you run this on your, on your network. Um, so the options are under uh, SNMP under the um, system maintenance menu. So you set your community and the community strings in your SNMP community. Uh, at the moment, public is set to read and write. Um, we are not using an SNMP server, so we're going to leave that. But if you've got the one in your system, in your network, then that's where you set it. The next thing we want to go in and have a look at is the, um, the security. So DOS protection comes as default, but you can enable more or slightly stricter DOS on your um, on your ports. So the DOS properties, as you can see here, you've got a whole load of um, attack prevention and you can enable it on the ports itself. So by default, uh, you've got DOS protection enabled. But you can then go in and disable it on ports or enable it on specific ports. Under the ACL, you can create an ACL so you can start restricting access to your device um, in terms of uh, IPv4, IPv6 or MAC addresses. Once you've created your access control list, you can then go through and set your um, ACE environment so specifically set your your rules again under Mac IPv4 and IPv6 and then you can bind that ACL or ACE environment to any number of your ports quality of service um, so this is a way that you can give priority over your voice traffic um, you can also set your um, bandwidth restrictions on ingress and egress and rate shaping um, we're not going to be doing any of that today and then under your certificate management you can you can add your own certificate to the device as well for uh, HTTPS access and additional items 
under system maintenance um, we've gone through everything here uh, you can define your access manager one of the things that you might want to turn off is telnet service however if you do that then you're not going to be able to configure the device from your uh, compatible router so you need to have telnet enabled to be able to do that but you can up your TLS version to 1.3 if you decide to under your product registration so this is the way that you would register your your network switch or your Draytech device so you'll need your MyVigor username and password to be able to register it but one, once you do it will appear in your list and it will take the um, serial number of your device and the other items so the next thing to do is to have a look at the dashboard so as you can see here we've given ours a system name um, you can create your own device name that you want and you do that via the dashboard scroll down to the connection status area and then you want to click on modify that will then allow you to add your own um, system name to your device that's all there is to the upgrade these switches are very very powerful in terms of what you can do with it so have a look at your um, VLAN settings and again if you're creating your VLAN you can assign specific VLANs to specific ports um, as well as a whole load of other features of which we're not going into today in terms of the upgrade process firmware upgrade process that is now complete in terms of the deployment into your environment that is also now complete and secure so you'll be able to put this into your system um, without any problems at all the default setting is DHCP so it will pick up its IP address from your router um, and you'll be able to access it from either um, a compatible Draytech router itself or direct through the interface on the switch if you found that video useful give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel and just like to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one